Well, I think that if we think of the whole concept of human-centered design, it always means that we are trying to innovate for those people who we call our customers. And I think for many years we have created a one-way flow of information towards the customer from the center of the organization, which is bizarrely the least connected to the customer, to a disempowered front line that just recites the rules. So I think the most important group of people to give critical mass around potentially uh, finding new ways of serving customers are in fact the front line. So I think that's definitely one piece. I think another piece is to create more fluidity in organizations. I think as people, uh, you cannot expect people to be flexible and fluid in their thinking if their role descriptions and reporting lines and working environments and ways of working are completely uh, fixed and, and, and unchangeable. So I think a bit of it is ways of working, a bit of it is uh, elevating the front line uh, giving the front line, you know, if you if you were to think in the current crisis of who the people are that we should be most listening to in terms of delivery models, it surely must be those frontline medical people who are putting their lives at risk every single day. If they can find a way of uh, addressing the challenges of this disease, those are the people we should be listening to, rather than the uh, the hospital administrator that's sitting twenty levels away from them. So I think that. Just the, you know, the, the, if you take the, the example of, of being a human being, is your skin is, it, is the largest organ that you have by far, and that is really what keeps you alive. Uh, the skin of organizations has actually been made numb for many, many years. And I think anything we can do to revitalize that sensory interface uh, is going to be very, very valuable.